Hello everybody, welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is September 29th, 2017. Getting ready for fasting tonight with the family. Uh, we will be fasting considering the uh, Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. This is the, the most holy of them, of the uh, celebrated feasts uh, for the Jewish people. And, you know, as we've been learning about these feasts, I have... As I've come to learn about them, I've been sharing it, of course, with my family and um, a little bit with you guys as well. And, you know, we've been following them, you know, maybe not perfectly, but to the best of our understanding. And uh, tonight is going to be another one of those days that we will fast. Uh, we fasted last week as well for the Feast of Trumpets. And uh, we're going to fast again this evening. And I understand for those who maybe understand it better than I do. It, it might even be that it's tomorrow night into the next, uh, into Sunday. Uh, I get that. I, I'm just doing the best of, of our understanding and uh, just doing it for the Lord and that he would just continue to reveal himself to us and uh, bless us and count us worthy to escape. And that's going to be a little bit of uh, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, it's going to take us from uh, 1 Corinthians, it's going to take us into Revelation 12, it's going to take us into Revelation 14, Isaiah 66. Um, you know, there's there's so much in so many different places that uh, the scriptures point us. It's just crazy. You know, uh, somebody did send me a comment and I appreciated it. They gave me some links uh, to show that there there is an understanding out there that Matthew, uh, in the Olivet Discourse, Matthew is to the Jewish people and that uh, Mark was to the Gentiles. And there's a lot more to the understanding uh, of what I've been revealing when it comes to First and Second Corinthians, First and Second Thessalonians, and First Second Timothy, First and Second Peter, and who those relate to. But a, a big thing is uh, when you realize that Luke, uh, in particular in the Olivet Discourse, and within passages themselves, like I said in the last video, uh, if you see something in like a, a parable or you see an explanation in um, Matthew and you see it in Luke, that means in Matthew it's for the Jews and in Luke it's for the entire body of the church. There, there's no, it's all pre-tribulation, meaning not the, not the specific group that's going to be going pre-tribulation, but it means it's being spoke of of the entire church prior to uh, an escape of any kind. When you see it in all three, in Matthew, it's for the Jews, in Mark, it's for the church Gentiles, and for, you see it in Luke, then he's talking like we see in, uh, for the Olivet Discourse in all three, Luke is talking to the group that are the pre-tribulation that will be counted worthy to escape. And that's what we're going to kind of see a little bit more here today. We're going to cover quite a bit, actually. And you know, I never have a time frame. I just uh, kind of get going here, and I, I pray that it is always under an hour. I, I'd rather be closer to half an hour, but sometimes it's just the way it goes, uh, for the most part, actually. So today, I wanted to start off, um, we're here in 1 Corinthians. And first, this part in 1 Corinthians, let's see, where are we? Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, from verse 6 to verse 8. And this is, a, this is a key thing, of course, born out of due time. And this is Paul, come on. And this is Paul telling us about this. So here he is. We know that 1 Corinthians is speaking to the church, right? And in here, though, he's talking kind of like to everybody. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Here, after Jesus rose from the dead, he was seen by above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to this present day, but some are fallen. Okay? After that, he was seen of James, of the apostles. And last of all, he was also seen, what? Uh, of me also, as one born out of due time. You see who this is? We have the Jews, we have the church, and we have Luke. It's like Matthew's group, Mark's group, and Luke's group being one born out of due time. Well, who's who's the group spoken of born out of due time? That's the escape church. Just like when he tells us, uh, let's go into, see, we're in 1 Corinthians here. Let's go into 2 Corinthians, one of my favorites. 
And this is where Paul now says in 2 Corinthians, now he's talking to the Jews, you know, that uh, above 14 years ago, I cannot tell, right? Like one being caught up. This is the this is the early escape here. This is the group that escapes, which isn't a rapture. It is like a rapture. This next group, which is James's group, which is the, the church that's going to go through the tribulation group, this group was, see, like he was caught up. This group is the caught up church. This one doesn't go with their body, but they will be getting their bodies when this entire group of the church gets their body. Nobody is getting a new body until the church gets their body. Everybody who is already dead, those that are the the ones who are so blessed and to to be able to to be found worthy of God to escape all these things that are coming, as Luke tells us, that get to go to the third heaven and get to be up there while the tribulation takes place. That this that the church has to go through for the group that just wasn't ready, that that weren't worthy because they weren't they weren't in relationship with the Lord. So. That's when this group will get their bodies as well when this entire group gets their bodies because the whole church will get their bodies at once. The dead first, followed by uh, those who are alive and in Christ. So that's what's, being, that's what's being talked of here. And we can even see that too. Let's see. We so I told you this is Luke as one born out of due time because Luke says we're going to escape all these things, those who are found worthy meaning we're not going to have part in any of the tribulation or, of course, any of the wrath. Well, in Mark's group, who do we have in Mark's group? James. See, James and of the apostles. Well, let's go to Mark's group and let's just confirm that. Where are we here? All right, let's go into Mark's group and see who's being spoken of here in the Olivet Discourse. See, you have Peter, James, John, and Andrew. These are the ones that came privately to him. So you see, there's James. That's your hint of who is being spoken to here. And then Matthew, of course, is, is the whole group of them in the discourse, all of the discourse with Matthew. And it's just all the disciples. Okay? So you have the apostles, and here's all your disciples and all the Jews dead and alive and so forth. Um, that, that's being spoken to as the third group. It's just like Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew's first here. Mark's group is second. And Luke's group is third. It's the exact same relation here. So where else do we see born as one born out of due time well we get that from isaiah 66 right let's go into isaiah 66 a lot of people talk about this and essentially what's being talked about here is revelation 12 5 this is revelation well 12 2 through 5 if you will so this is where i was saying we're going to touch into revelation 12 a bit because we can see here before she travailed, she brought forth. Okay, so this is even before she travails, she brings forth. Before her pain, she was delivered of a man-child. That's 144,000. I'm going to show you what the relation is within this and Re Revelation 12, which also will lead into Revelation 14 and how it plays out. Excuse me. So before she travails, she brings forth. Before her pain... She was delivered of a man-child, the 144,000, who had heard of such a thing, who had seen such a thing. For Z as soon as Zion travailed, so as soon as Jerusalem travails, she brought forth her child. This is the church rapture portion here. Okay, let's go into Revelation 12 and see how that reads. What that is saying is the group, so here's your brought forth of a man-child, here's your her child being caught up. But let's look here. Before she travailed, she brought forth. So she brings forth before she travails. Just like I was telling you guys. Sometime between this sign and before she travails, before Jerusalem starts to travail, the those who are found worthy to escape, this is where they're leaving. Before here. So between here and here. Between these two is when those who are found worthy to escape will go. And I'll even show you more evidence of that based on Isaiah and then going into four, uh, Revelation 14 as well. So before she travailed, uh, sorry, yeah, bef uh, travailing in birth, right? And then we have here, 
before she travailed, she brought forth. So who is she bringing forth here? She's bringing forth those who escaped. Now, in this group, the ones that are being brought forth, that's being spoken of all in here in Isaiah 66, it's the 144,000. So first of all, she brings forth an entire group. The, every believer that was found worthy, which I said is the 144 million, and the man-child is the 144,000 of the 144 million. Okay, so before she travailed, she brought forth. That's that group. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. So before the pain came of who? Before Jerusalem. Before Jerusalem goes into travail and her pain comes, the man-child is delivered. Well, let's look up here. So we see here's the man-child brought forth. So the man-child is brought forth. So these two down here is at the birth. So this one is brought forth. But it says before she travailed, right? Before her pain, right? Before her pain, she was delivered of a man-child. So this ties in together. This is the entire brought forth. This is the, the pre-tribulation escape, and we will see that as we go lower down here as well. So this is the pre-tribulation escape group, but we find out that from this pre-tribulation escape group that was brought forth, she was delivered of the man-child. She was delivered of the 144,000, see, that were the ones brought forth. They were now brought forth. They're there on Mount Zion right before it's about to go, right? Because the church is still here. The church hasn't been caught up yet. The 144,000 have been sealed and are now brought forth and are on Mount Zion before the, the, the church body is raptured as a whole. Every believer dead and alive receiving their new body. The 144,000 will be on Mount Zion. And we see this in Revelation 14. All right? And lo, I looked in the lamp, uh, and the lamp stood on the Mount Zion with the 144,000. You see that? So there they are. They have been what? Delivered. They have been brought forth to Mount Zion. Just like Isaiah said, just like Revelation 12 said. It's before what? Before Zion's pain. Before her travail. Right? So who has heard such thing? Who has seen such thing? For as soon as what? Just like I said. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her child. This is, this is the her child, which is the Revelation 12 caught up. This is the her child was caught up. That's this group. You see that? So again, you have the 144,000 before the child caught up. You have the 144,000 before the child caught up. And it gives a little bit more detail. So we have the 144,000. They escaped first. And we'll see that. I'll show you in a minute. They escaped first. And then they were brought forth. And then Zion is about to go into extreme pain. Right? Jerusalem's going to be surrounded. It's going to get really bad for them. And then, so the church is going to see that. That's still on the earth at that time, right before they get raptured out. And then there's the rapture. Right? This is a great understanding for Isaiah 66 and how people were putting the timing of these things. You know, again, like I said, nothing was going to happen before Revelation 12. That I did believe that that was the starting point that the, the escape would have happened. But what's going to happen is that was telling us, that was our warning sign. And between there and the travailing, the escape takes place, right? The escape is going to be, like I said, the 144 million. It's going to be Jews and Gentiles who were believers in Jesus Christ, who were ready and found worthy, right? And then she's going to bring them forth. She's going to, they're going to be brought back after they've been sealed, like we saw in Revelation 7, where they get sealed. And then we go to Revelation 14, like I said. And in Revelation 14, we see them here standing on Mount Zion. They've all been sealed and they're there. Now, bang, you have the 
rapture take place. It's all there. Now watch this. How do we know that what I'm telling you is true, that they're from the escaped? You know, I always say escaped. It's not a rapture. We saw that the early escape, like Luke tells us, right? That's where we get it. See, watch you, therefore. This is Luke 21. This is the Olivet Discourse from Luke's point of view, or, yeah, from his version. And so watch you, therefore, and pray always. This is one of my favorites. I always tell you guys this, that you may be accounted worthy to what? Escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. To escape all these things. This is not a rapture. It's an escape. It's the exact same thing I showed you in 2 Corinthians 12.2, all right, when Paul, again, is telling them this 14-year time period, a little bit more than 14-year time period, like being caught up, so it's not a rapture. It's where the Spirit goes, and we get to go, we get to be taken out of the way. Do you understand how important this is? We get to escape this. This here is to escape all these things which are coming upon the earth. That's this group here. And we get to go into where? The third heaven. This is where the angels are. This is where God is. This is where we get to go. Isn't that awesome? That's the escape. This is the rapture. Okay? So it's the escape. Now watch this. In Isaiah 66, as we go down a little bit further... Here we have the escape. Then she brings back, she delivers the 144,000 to Mount Zion. And then as soon as Mount Zion is travailing and the 144,000 are standing there, she brings forth what? Her children that are now harpazo, they're raptured, and the entire church body is going to paradise. That's what goes on here. That's exactly Revelation 12 with more detail. And it's an explanation, which we're going to see, is also uh, Revelation 14, when we see, here they are, on Mount Zion, and then we're going to see another angel, uh, another angel fly in the midst, having the everlasting gospel, who's going to preach to all, all nations, kindred, tongue, everywhere on earth. Excuse me. Everywhere on earth. So... Who is this group that's going around, right? I saw this angel flying through the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach. Well, who's, who's getting this gospel and who's preaching it? Well, Isaiah 66 tells us. It ties right into it. Watch this. So Isaiah 66, 19. And I will set a sign among them. The sign is that angel. And I will send those that escape of them unto the nations. Did you hear that? I will send those that escape of them. Of them. So what, who did I tell you? See, look at this. Those that escape. What? He's going to send, the Lord is going to send those that escape of them. So who is the of them? This is the entire group that escaped. Those that escaped of them. This is the whole group that escaped of them. There's the 144,000 in those that escaped, who were those that were found worthy to escape all these things which are coming upon the whole earth. They're going to be sent back, which is exactly what we see in Revelation 14, where all 144,000 have been sealed with the Father's name written in their foreheads. That is the same thing. That's them being sealed. Those are the 144,000 of the 144 million that were found worthy to escape all these things that are being brought back. And what does he even call them? Right here in Isaiah. They use the same word in Isaiah 66. I will send those that escape. We just saw that in Luke. Who's that group? Those found worthy to escape. And then we went into Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and what? It's those who are like being caught up. They weren't caught up because they can't have their caught up bodies yet. It's all going to happen, every, everybody in the body at once. It's like it. It's their spirits that are caught up. That's all the same group. 
That's the group that escapes. Isn't that wild? And the 144,000 are, see, they're sent what? Back into all the nations to them that have not heard of the fame or the glory of God, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. This is, they're going to send them throughout all the earth. They're going to be preaching to everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody who hasn't heard. So people say, well, what about those who, who you know, live in the jungle and all these places that have never heard of it? Well, there's going to be works involved at the end as well. But these angels, these, they're from that group of the, 100, the 144 million that escaped from what was coming upon the whole earth, like Luke said. And they're going to be sent back like Revelation 14 says to give a testimony to proclaim the glory of the Lord throughout all the world like Revelation 14 says. You see that? It's all here. There's your understanding of Isaiah 66 that people have been trying to figure out forever. All right? And maybe some have. I'm not saying I'm the only one. That's not what I'm saying. I understand there are people that have that have figured this out. It, I just don't come across them or I've never come across them. Uh, when, when the understanding of the breaking down, but like I said, I do understand that I haven't seen everybody's sermon and testimony on every piece of the Bible. So I, I get that, but I'm revealing it here because as it's been revealed, revealed to me, and I'm just so in awe about it and just like, wow, there it is. It's the exact same thing that I realize, okay, this, if, if it's new to me and I've been doing so much studying that there's got to be others that that haven't heard of this as well, which is why I'm sharing it with you guys. All right, so that is our as one born out of due time. This is like same thing as Luke saying, uh, those who have been found worthy to escape all these things. That's the same group. All right, here's your Mark group right here. Same, they even throw James in there to give you that hint that this is who is spoken to here, right? And they even put it in the same order, right? It's the same order as Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So I'm telling you guys, that is the order. And as much as, yes, over the years, they have taught that Matthew is for the Jews and Mark is for the Gentiles, Mark is for the Gentile church that's going to be in tribulation. And Luke is talking to those who are not going to be part of the church tribulation who are going to get to escape. And that's what, Paul here is referring to as one born out of due time, All right? And then again, so this is, again, in Paul, we have 1 Corinthians, but we also have in 2 Corinthians where, you know, as one born out of due time is repeated where it was like being raptured. That's exactly what he says. That's the same group, like being raptured. The second time is the rapture. The third time, he's not come to bring burden upon them. He's not come to for his children. So here, he, he took these guys out of the way and brought burden. Here, he took the entire children out of the way. And here, he's now for back for the Jews to, to, to bring him into their, uh, their thousand-year reign, right? Into their kingdom time. So... You know, it's. I hope you guys saw that. Just rewatch it. Rewatch it. You know, this one definitely didn't go as long as my other ones, which is good. Uh, you know, I, I can't see my time right now, but it's probably within half an hour or so. So rewatch it. Get the better understanding from, you know, it ties in. This is just a, a little thing here with uh, Mark, uh, sorry, with uh, 1 Corinthians 15, just to, to reveal another piece to show proof of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And the fact of being born out of due time. This is the escape group. And then we have Isaiah 66. And we can understand before she travailed. It gives you greater understanding to what I was saying the whole time. That between here and here. Or not the whole time. But since this Revelation 12 sign came and went. That the understanding it's going to be between here and here. That the escape is going to take place. Because Luke told us before. She travails before any of this stuff happens. We're going to escape those who are found worthy, that is. Right? And then we see in Revelation 12 that after the travailing, then she brings forth. 
and then the child is caught up. It's the exact same thing. The escape, the brought forth, and once Zion is about to go into travail, they're going to go into their tough time over in Israel. Then there's the escape of the total escape of the church. And then here we go. Not the escape, sorry. That's the total escape of the church isn't an escape, sorry. The, the entire rapture of the church. And then here it tells us who those are that are being delivered. The man-child is of the group that escapes, and they're being sent back down. They're found on Mount Zion in Revelation 14, right at the beginning. And that's the group that is going to spread the gospel into every nation during the time of the Great Tribulation after the church is gone. That's going to spread it throughout all the land for the Jews. And yeah, so there it is from 1 Corinthians to Isaiah 66. Uh, in particular, this one I wanted to focus on was Isaiah 66 so that you guys had a better understanding of what exactly was talking about who, what, when, and how it relates identically, identical to uh, Revelation 12 and ties into Revelation 14 while declaring the truth of what I've been telling you about the escape that Luke tells us about too in the Olivet Discourse, um, in his Olivet Discourse. So with that, guys, uh, I hope this brought some more light into your understanding. Any questions, please send me a comment. I'll do my best to get to them. And uh, pray you guys have a great weekend. Uh, I pray that you're, you're going to fast for this special day. Uh, you know, as, as believers, I'm not Jewish. Neither, not nobody in my family is Jewish. But as we come to learn the feast days, the, the feasts of the Lord, those that he proclaims as his, uh, and we, we get to know them, we should do our best to follow them as best as we know them. Uh, which is why this evening we will be fasting for, you know, from sunset to sunset. So my family loves sushi. So that is what we're going to have tonight before sunset for a nice last uh, big dinner. Uh, it's going to be sushi night and we'll all be full and happy. And, you know, praise the Lord if this weekend is the time uh, that it falls in the Day of Atonement. Uh, as you study the Day of Atonement, you may, there's so many great teachings out there. There was even one done by uh, Sid Roth. He's got a really short six-minute and change video that's out maybe yesterday or the last couple days or so, maybe even today, uh, that's worth watching just to get a better understanding. It's just brief. It tells him a, li it's a little bit about his story when he was younger and what he thought and um, also what it represents and how it's, uh, it's, it's the biggest of the feast days uh, for the Jews, for, for the Lord. So uh, this... This could, again, be the weekend. I'm not going to say, yes, it is, absolutely. But we have seen so much. And, you know, watch my last video uh, if you have questions about that. Because with the sign of Jonah and how it was in Luke, the one that pertains to the uh, the Elul 1, August 21st eclipse and the 40-day warning and, you know, Jonah and all that stuff. I mean, it's it, it's it's so uncanny. And with in and tying in with the Revelation 12 sign, we got to remember God is perfect. It needs to fit perfectly. We can't stuff in a puzzle piece and say, "Oh, there it is," if it doesn't just naturally fit perfectly in. And that's what I'm trying to reveal to you guys every day, uh, or every time I do a video, is to just give you greater understanding as it's revealed to me, and I make sure that it fits. Just like I was revealing my other ones. I was wrong, like I said, again, with the timing of Revelation 12 for how I understood what it was. However, we do know, and I'll finish up with this. However, we do know that in Luke, the escape all these things, that the escape all these things is right off the bat. See? Wars and rumors of wars. Wars and commotions. But don't be afraid. All these things must first come to pass. This first come to pass is for everybody. It's the entire church. It's everybody on earth. It's, it's going to be seen of the wars and rumors of wars, which we could say has been happening for decades. We get that. But then it completely changes right here when he's compared to what Luke, uh, compared to what Mark says and compared to what Matthew says here. 
Luke starts off with his own words saying, Then said he, Jesus, unto them. I tell you guys this all the time because it is so important. And that's why I tell you, before there's any travail, before there's any pain in Israel, Jerusalem, this group here that Luke talks to, that is the one, that's the group found worthy to escape all these things, leaves between here and between here. I, this is something that I've said from the start. We leave between here and here. It was the timing, like I said, of the, of the sign that was misunderstood as the timing marker of when that escape would take place. But it is definitely before there's any travail. Luke tells us exactly that, right? And again, he tells us again right here. See, and he spoke to them. Jesus spoke to them the parable. He wasn't saying it to Luke's group because Luke understands who he's talking to, right? He's talking to that group who's praying always, who's, who's being counted worthy, who's in prayer with the Lord, who's, who's repenting and in thanksgiving for the Lord. You know, praying to be counted worthy to escape all these things which shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man because you're going to be in the third heaven in your, with your spirit, in your soul, not with your body. Got that? This is very, very exciting times. Whether it's this weekend or it's between now and, uh, you know, Passover or Pentecost, I'm telling you, it is so so exciting uh you know man anything that you have wrong in your life anything that you think is missing that's kind of you know poking at you a little bit i'll give you an example of myself just i'll i'm not going to tell you too much about myself but i'll tell you a little bit uh, i used to drink way too much and i hit it really good i was one of those that they say like uh you know a, a working alcoholic if you will you know a functioning alcoholic where people didn't know how much i was actually drinking and it got, it was getting worse and worse and worse. And still nobody knew. I knew I was praying all the time that I could get out of this, get out of this. And, uh, until I ended up having to go to the hospital because I had been drinking so much that I was bleeding and I, I had been unknowingly throwing up blood for a while and didn't realize that it was. So that's just to give you a little idea. So for those of you who know me out there, uh, that do listen to my channel, uh, the Lord saved me from that, brought me back. Uh, didn't go to any courses or anything. I just knew when I kicked it uh, and when they, they fixed up my stomach that, uh, or I think it was small intestine, that I was back. I Even before, when I stopped, I stopped and I knew that I was done. But what did I do? I'm a, I, I love my wine. I love cigars. You know, I love all that stuff. I uh, used to. And cigars I just replaced wine with cigars and my wife was fine with it she didn't really mind the smell of cigars she, you know the family when I was younger when my kids were younger and I'd have them once in a while uh you know they they always thought it was funny that I liked my cigars and now that they're older my kids my son didn't care my wife didn't really concern herself with it um but my daughter was always saying how smelly it was and how smelly it was so but what ended up happening is I had replaced one habit with another one and I didn't think much of it either. You know, as I'm, even again, I'm doing my studies and I'm, I'm doing my business. And, but I was having a number of cigars a day and it was the same type of thing. I was replacing one thing with the other and listening to some of these pastors, if we're really to prepare, and that's why I'm bring, bringing this up, if we're really committed and there's that thing that's just itching at you, you know, we're told that we shouldn't be drunkards, that we should be watching and paying attention, and especially in the last days, whether it's this weekend or whether it's 10 years from now, which I certainly don't believe is going to happen based on your counts as well. But regardless of when it's going to be, if we believe it's this close, then we should be preparing. So for me, that meant quitting my cigars. So about a, I had been smoking my cigars like that for about a year and a half or so. And early September, I quit my cigars. Just like that. Last one, I was thinking about it. I was contemplating, thinking maybe one a day, maybe two. and then. But I enjoy it. So I was using that to fill up, you know, as I'm doing research or doing stuff work. And, you know, I just have my cigar and light my cigar up. And, you know... It's funny how the Lord works because 
I was listening to some different uh, teachers, a pastor and some different teachers like, um, who is it, uh, Jerry Tony, I, I believe his name is. I've watched a number of his things and he was talking about, you know, with cigars and, you know, if you're, if you're not doing, or not cigars, sorry, cigarettes and that you guys need to kick this stuff, right? And who else? Uh, another one of my favorite pastors is uh, Pastor Sandy Armstrong uh, with uh, Soldiers for Christ uh, out of California. And, you know, same with him. He was talking about it as well. And he was talking about cigarettes. And it was funny the timing that these guys were talking about it and that I was hearing it. And lo and behold, as much as I didn't really want to quit my cigars as well, I was like, no, that's it, man. If if I'm going to do this right and it's been poking at my mind, it's been in my spirit, you know, it's just you get this feeling and you're like, Ugh. then obviously the Lord's trying to tell you. The Holy Spirit's talking to you and saying, end it, finish it. You don't have a lot of time left before I return. And do you want to be found smoking a cigar uh, or smoking cigarettes for others? And when the Lord comes, you know, when he comes to get those for the escape, man, I, I don't want to risk it, right? That's the fear of the Lord. You know, I love the Lord and I fear the Lord. I'm afraid to, to do stuff like that. I'm afraid to lie. I'm a, even the slightest little thing, I'm afraid to say that there's this number when it might be this number. So I'll say, well, it could be this, but it's maybe more likely like this. You know, I can't say for sure. You know, I, I, I'm I afraid because I don't want to miss it. Do you get that? I don't want to miss the opportunity to escape. And I affirm that to my family, my wife and my two children, every just about every day. And but you know, actually, I should say every day, especially in these last, you know, September here, since a whole bunch of stuff has been getting revealed to me um, and the timing of things that appear to be the time that we're in, I, I do affirm it to them. They don't fight me when it comes to, you know, uh, having a, excuse me, uh, fasting and so forth. They're like, OK, yeah, let's do it. So, you know, have that fear of the Lord as well. That that little thing that you know has been kind of itching at you, I'm telling you, if you go to the Lord with it and you just do it, just do it. Just throw that pack of cigarettes away. Pour that glass of wine out. Return all those empty bottles so that you don't have the memory of them in your house. Put those ashtrays away or throw them in the garbage and literally just walk away from those things. Now is not the time to be doing these things, especially as believers. I know it wasn't easy. I had to end up in the hospital for my wine drinking. Do you get that? So I get it. But I was praying out loud, screaming for the Lord to help me when I knew I was going through some pain physically. And he answered. I had to go to the hospital was the answer. It was when it was revealed to me. So, you know, have that fear. Love them and have that fear and pray that you be counted worthy to escape all these things. With that, everybody have a blessed weekend. God bless you and your families. And hopefully we'll see you this weekend. God bless.